Will you allow me to devote myself to young Izuku? Together yes. we will go beyond. I will lift him up. And I will protect your son, even if it costs me my life. Shocked mom expression. Uh, are you okay? In hindsight, I feel like mom kind of wanted to be convinced. She was feeling pretty turbulent about withholding Deku's dreams from him. If you can promise me you'll do that, then he can return to UA. Oh, mom. Mom also should get a, a shout out for getting to what matters. If you're going to go back to this school, you have to be so careful. <laughs> um, of course. I won't right. make you worry. We'll see about that. The hero you admire so much actually began to admire you. Yeah, yeah, I'm that's sort of the special thing about the relationship, or one of them. Baby. They lift each other up. Knowing how wholeheartedly Master and he pupil. respects you makes you happy, son. And he earned it. This is great, I think. You know, actually, one thing that surprised me the most about the show, from where it started to how it progressed, is that All Might and Deku sort of weren't that much of a thing. I mean, one of the things that made me fall in love with the show was the early episodes where they discovered each other and did the beach training, which I'm still waiting for another round of, and really developed this sort of beautiful relationship. But as soon as All Might started teaching at UA, he's there and, like, he gives... Deku advice, but the forces that have been steering Deku have been more his friends and experience and the villains than, you know, direct one-on-one -on -one All Might training. And that's also been so great that it doesn't feel like a loss, but it would also be great to have a return to that. After my mother gave me permission, I left home. Time for the dorms, baby! <laughs> Fun with friends, that's what I'm here for. Enough villains! <laughs> what kind of pajamas do they have, I wonder? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> School time. I love how everything is a still image except for Ayoama's sparkles. About a five minute walk from the main school, they built a student dorm. Yeah, yeah. We need to go to the dorms for our social relationships. I mean student safety. That's what this is about. Not having fun dorm situations. This is the way Nezu wanted it. This was my... No. Our, our home. home. Moving into dorms. Hell yeah. I'm pumped. I haven't been this pumped since... All Might fought all for one. To ensure the safety of our students, it's also how we're addressing one of the threats we've yet to take care of. And also it's gonna be fun. <laughs> we're glad to see the teachers got to come back too. I was afraid you wouldn't be allowed. The people at the press conference seem pretty upset with They're you They're out for blood. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I was surprised as well. Look at them talking like equals. I suspect it was They've been through so much together. ...to let the teachers return instead of revamping the entire faculty. That was sort of a cynical take, no? Although that's very Aizawa, seeing through the bureaucracy. I'm still not exactly clear if All Might got fired or not, but respect to them for not submitting to public pressure. They could have gone all the way into making some conciliatory gesture and firing a bunch of people just to get the heat off their backs, but they didn't, and that's good. I feel like now is probably not the best time to bring in new people. Although it does leave a challenge that's been set up, which is, is there an insider? Which could include the students, so how do you address that, I wonder? I'll explain how your dorm assignments will work shortly. First, Are we gonna get roommates? However, this should be good. We haven't forgotten about the provisional hero licenses you were supposed to get oh, during yeah. the training camp. Yeah, that's a potential game changer. If anyone's earned it, though. Yeah, Yorozu. Todoroki, Midoriya, Ida. Oh, you this five group. Are the ones who broke the rules and went to rescue Bakugo that night. Ooh. <laughs> Whoops. How does Aizawa handle this? Tough. If it weren't for All Might's retirement from the hero scene, I would expel everyone here. No, you wouldn't. That's all. <laughs> Enjoy your new home. Okay. Uh, that went well. We're supposed to be excited after that speech. Yeah. Uh, all right, I get what he's saying, and I think that's probably the right attitude, but I can't help but feel like Aizawa is aware of a positive of this as well, which is that, yeah, it was applied wrong. Yeah, they were sort of on the wrong track. They were being motivated by emotion, vengeance, feelings of powerlessness. They could have been seriously injured, which would have destroyed UA. There's just a lot to consider. But isn't their bond special? Like, look how cohesive they are as a unit. Even for those who think they made the wrong choice, that to me is a great sign. You have this whole class of people that's looking out for each other. That's not usual. Not to mention just the raw courage of doing it. So to me, it feels more like Aizawa just dragging them back to a mean where he wants them. As comfortable as they seem now, he is still their teacher, and I feel like there is that kind of balancing act that happens with teaching where ideally you want to have a good rapport with students you know it's it's great it's wonderful when you get along with them but sometimes structure creates the most amount of freedom and often if you have too much familiarity it blurs the lines so much that there's less structure people feel a little bit too free and therefore you don't have the foundation from which to build on in ways that are useful towards their futures or towards their education which is why they're there you know so you got to find that balance and i think the important things towards that are having a clear goal and having a good intent actually wanting to get the students to somewhere good, which Aizawa clearly does, and I think his intuition about that is one of his greatest strengths. Come here. Uh, uh-huh, wait for what? 
Kirishima. What did you just do with him in the bushes? Whoa! Did you sink him down for cash? <laughs> no! This is my money, you idiot. To replace what you spent. On those binoculars? Night vision goggles, right? But why did he just take him into the bushes? Thanks. Yeah, that was Bakugo's way of saying I love you too. I have people like Bakugo in my life actually, where they're initially really grating, but if you have the patience to figure them out, you realize that they just express things differently. And I can't say this is a larger trend, this is just my personal experience, but the people I think of in my life like that are, are often the most honorable. They're the most reliable and most trustworthy. It's a matter of separating expression from like core intent, which is different. The expressions themselves aren't necessarily reliable. You know, it's more about where the person is and who they show up as and what they do, how consistent they are, etc. To maybe give him some credit or other people who are like that, a lot of times the issue is that they just don't know how or that it feels like a superficiality to express things in the ways people often want them to be expressed. But you know, I met plenty of people who are expressive in the ways I expected who were not good to me. You know what I mean? And increasingly as I've gotten older and met a lot of people and had a lot of different relationships, sometimes getting past that weird, you know, cold layer is where some really deep and interesting bonds can happen. Kirishima sometimes quickly reading that. Steam is the best thing to do, I guess. <laughs> Sorry everyone, I know this won't make up for it, but let's all go out to eat tonight on me! <laughs> they could use a little R&R, &R, for sure. A little group bonding time. There's even a courtyard! So spacious and new! <laughs> yeah, definitely an upgrade. Just Here imagine the me. social possibilities. <laughs> I knew Mineta was going to interpret it this way. I knew it. Everyone gets their own room. You should be comfortable. Oh. You've got your own AC, toilets. This is super luxurious. How much is tuition again? This room is about the same size as my closet at home. <laughs> All right. Okay. So spend the day unpacking and getting settled. I can think of nothing I want more for some weird reason. <laughs> Yeah, and in case the villains have any trouble finding them, it has a big sign that says 1A. I know he could have died, but it's kind of exciting <laughs> to be <laughs> that, living here. That line reading. Mm -hmm. A unified class. It's the perfect way to increase our cooperation and discipline. You know, he is happy, based on his arms. Let's go around and see who has the coolest room. <laughs> ah! No way you can't go in there! Please, it's not fit for... Is it just all my... Yeah, I knew it. Oh, no, this is so embarrassing. You're such a fanboy. Well, I admire him. Don't look at his YouTube page. Don't look at his YouTube page. What are you hiding? I bet it's empty. Oh, it is not empty. scary! You fiends. Oh man, I had a keychain like this when I was in middle school. So this is how boys like to decorate. Please leave. This is exactly what I wanted. This this is exactly what I was hoping for with this dorm episode. <laughs> Seeing the rooms. Yes. That is perfect. Mag. What do you say? <laughs> oh no! You don't need to, you don't need this room. Skip! Yeah. I'm curious though what it looks like. A lot of love seats probably. Extra toothbrushes. Um, if we're done here, then let's go. That's me though. That's me. Nice. Like in the sheets? Like in the blanket? Really? This is the store in the mall I'd avoid. What? Oh, it fits. Yeah, I like it. Everyone's really getting into the competition. And so am I. Fed it with a contest to see who has the coolest dorm room. Well, what about them? Yeah, it seems we a little bit weird. I mean, I get it, but one way is sort of a strange, strange game. They get to judge. A surprisingly convincing argument from Mineta. <laughs> stoked her competitive He's got deep spirit. personal stakes. That's why. And that is how the very first class one A best see prom contest room? got its start. The girls' dorms. I suppose. If we must. Is this what Nezu wanted, though? <laughs> This is the real reason we're here, let's be honest, let's face it. It's not about student safety. Literally, like, they're all targets now. But it's all worth it, because we get to have Class 1A house competition. I, for one, am fine with the risk they're taking. Uh, this doesn't have to be a contest. <laughs> oh no, Mineta has other plans. to see the other rooms, then everyone would yell at me. But since all these guys with bruised egos are on board, I get to join in all inconspicuous-like. You just hope Mineta turns out as an actual hero. You hope. Who knows what scintillating secrets I'll find? It's probably not as interesting as you think. But you might not get what I'm going for. A den of manliness. I also like if it. If I found out my boyfriend had a room that looked like this, I'd dump him. Well, yeah, well, if I met a girl like you, I'd keep looking. Because I couldn't see anything. Pretty judgmental for someone with no features. She's going to pass on Kirishima as a boyfriend like people pass on her to be useful in a battle. It's easy for her to criticize when her room is probably the most visually appealing thing about her. What Kirishima's room tells me is he's a man of action. Did you see that punching bag? He's dedicated. You got to look past the superficialities and look at who they are. He's 
Committed to training. Is that not a, a worthwhile trait? I would date Kirishima if I was a heterosexual girl. He seems like a great guy. Good luck to you, Invisible Girl, and your your romantic journey. So bold! Makes me want to work out! You yeah, Uraraka's got the right idea. Next up, Shoji! You're not gonna find anything interesting here. Uh... More That's me. At all, dude. That was my first apartment or second apartment in Korea. I've never understood why someone would want to fill their room with junk. Yeah. Guys totally. Always have a super pervy side. Why are you looking through the guy's mattress, my dude? <laughs> so I was going to wait to pick my personal choice for winner of the room contest, but I don't need to say anything more. Shoji takes it. You know how much time he saves on cleaning? A lot. And when he's ready to go on an adventure or a trip or whatever, he just goes without a second thought. It might just be particular to me, but I really love the feeling of knowing that at any time I can pick up and move in a suitcase. In my early days of traveling, I used to move to countries to live with only a backpack and it just felt so good. I just felt so free, but it's not for everyone. It's not that I'm against having stuff. Like I like having nice things, but the utility for me of being mobile and having less to do, like less daily maintenance, which I sort of hate, outweighs the utility of like having stuff. And also it just fits into a larger principle that I feel is not totally healthy, but has done a lot for me, which is the idea that sacrifice is something that's not explored enough. There are a lot of times I talk to people who express things that they want and you know it's it's tough because it's easy to say this as an outsider but things that for my eyes seem doable if there are certain things that would be willing to be sacrificed like for example one thing i often hear is how people wish they would they could travel more and i'm like you really could you know you really could but you would have to sacrifice a lot the more you're willing to explore the things that you can sacrifice which is probably a lot more than we initially think the easier a lot of those things would become instantaneously and i feel like that's a conversation i have with people quite often wow. that's a pass for me Sarah Not a fan. Peggy for someone who'd like this stuff. <laughs> Yep, that's me, always the wild card. Rugs are not a wild card. <laughs> Something smells good, though. What is it? Oh, crap, I forgot about that. I finished a packing really early. This guy's the real danger to this dorm, not the villains. He's going to take the whole place down. Oh, that's an expert baker? It's delicious, so fluffy. I'm seeing a trend here, animals and food. I think it's great that you have such a fun hobby, Sato. But Kirishima's... Boxing hobby is no good? It's because they can't eat it? Is that why? I seriously did not expect this reaction. But mostly I bake as part of the training for my sugar quirk. I don't know, man. That's real. Like, having skills that provide value to others is so, so great. It's so crucial. Anything. Your room's girlier than this. Because I've got style. <laughs> <laughs> We're done here. Next is me! Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be extra hard on this because... Oh, that's all right. Now this is girly. So pink. This is going to be Mineta's favorite. Plus ultra. Sniffing plus ultra. Yeah, it's not very interesting, I know. I don't know, I like the normal stuff best. It's fine. Forbidden gardens. What? What does that mean? Where is Sue? I haven't seen her. Is it like a pond? Hmm. Is Sue the spy? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be insane. She isn't, is she? That'd be crazy. She'd make a great spy. My room's a little bit more cramped than I intended. Would she bring her whole closet? I'm not as creative as some of yours. <laughs> That is huge! I forget how rich she is. How do you forget when she keeps talking about it? Remember, you can't pick yourself, guys. I vote Shoto. Second place, I'm giving to Ida because it's neat. I love his covers. <laughs> And I like the books. Third place, Uraraka. I know it's a boring choice, but those are the rooms I would want to live in. The overwhelming winner of this totally awesome Todoroki? contest is... Rikido Sato! Oh, because of the, the baked goods. <laughs> it's not really about his room, though. It's just they want the, the cakes. The yeah, delicious. that's not... Okay. You do you, That's first. why you fill it! <laughs> Yorozu, Kirishima, you have a sec? It's really important. Uh, it can't be as important as this room competition. Oh no, what's going on? Right here. You alright? Sue so? said she had something she wanted to tell everyone. My room is a lake? Yeah, I'm getting actually concerned now. Going after Bakugo would break the rules. That means you'd be acting like villains, not heroes. My heart was hurting. And the things I said must have upset you. No need to apologize for that at all. But it turns out I was worthless. A complete failure. Totally the opposite conclusion to reach. I didn't think I deserved to joke around and have fun with everyone like usual. That's what it was. I feel bad for her, making fun of her and accusing her of being a spy. I wanted you to know so we could hang out and talk and have a good time again. They're all going to be there for her. I mean, it's so obvious to them. That's why we did the room contest. To bring us closer together and make us feel like a class again. And we really needed it. The viewers, too. Let's all work hard at our training and be good friends again, okay? Sue! So, I'm sorry! Thanks for telling us yes. how you feel! It's okay! What I a sweetheart. Apologize. And Invisible Girl's gonna pass on him because of his room? Give me a break. <laughs> she deserves what she gets. <laughs> Why am I so triggered by that? I think in this episode, Invisible Girl's personality has become truly transparent. Everyone wants things to go back to normal. 
We need our lives to feel stable. Yeah. Even though so much has changed, and we'll Damn, keep changing. Arm. It's our duty to make each other better, stronger, so we can become heroes together. The together thing is so key. And they've prove that, you know, they have the cohesion. And you know Aizawa recognizes that. I think one of the key things for the kids to remember is like they were all making the best of a bad situation that was not of their their creation. So you got to take some of that pressure off. I get it. You know, like the natural tendency in, in these situations is to frame it as being more in one's control as it really was because that in some ways is a little bit more satisfying and feels a little bit safer than the reality, which is just that it's chaos, you know, and that crazy things happen all the time, which is terrifying because there's nothing you can do about that. So by taking personal responsibility for it, at least it's comforting in that one way. But the downside is that there's no real way to go with that that reflects the actual nature of events. And you go down that path of ruminating yourself into despair, it's harder to get out of it because it's not based on something real in the first place. It's just something that happened. And about the specifics of what Sue said, I mean, she was a much needed counter argument in that moment of people being overly emotional. I get the guilt because it worked out. Like they say Bakugo and that was a great thing. And so how do you feel being someone who was against that initially? But she wasn't wrong in saying that. And I think she gave them a gift of like a differing opinion. And I think it took a lot of strength saying that to her friends and her comrades. The good news is, of course, they all understand that. They know where her heart is, it's in a good place, and it wasn't out of like pettiness, it wasn't out of like oh, these are the rules and the rules always must be followed or whatever. It legitimately was a concern that needed to be raised and she raised it. And so for these kids, not for one second would they hold that against her, especially knowing who she is. It might also not even be connected to what she's actually saying. It's probably just like a rush of emotions after this traumatic event. You know, how do you process it? To go so quickly back to normalcy like that. I mean, I really enjoyed this episode. I was the kids, you know, sort of forgetting about the, the heaviness of some of the past episodes. But you know, for someone conscientious like Sue, who is really, really sharp and really in tune with what's going on, and does deeply care about people, it's not that easy to just shut it off. Like the danger is still lurking, especially since they have a sign <laughs> on their collective dorm room announcing their location. So it was a really fun episode. I mean, it's the the house adventure, the dorm adventure I didn't know I needed, but needed. That's oddly one of the things the show <laughs> does best for reasons I can't explain. Like I enjoy their outfit choices and their mall days and their beach trips and pool parties or whatever, because they're good kids. I think that's really what it comes down to is that you like them and you want to spend time with them. And it's fun to see them spend time together, especially as a contrast to some of the more like heavy stuff that they go through. So yeah, that's it for episode 13. I'll see you guys next time when Invisible Girl struggles to find a boyfriend.